In this video, I'm going to show you how I went from a voice memo on my phone to a fully orchestrated piece of music. This whole thing starts with a melody that I came up with one night while I was noodling around on the piano. And I found this melody and I liked it. And I was looking for a melody that I could record with a large orchestra. So this is the process of how I went from the idea on my phone to the full orchestrated piece of music at the end of this video. So when I sit down to compose, I like to think about composing and orchestrating hand in hand. Uh, you can't compose without thinking about melodies and harmonies, but also it's best to think about what instruments are going to be playing those melodies and harmonies. I like to think in terms of melody, chords, bass notes, and extras, uh, just four elements of orchestration. The melody is obviously self-explanatory, it's the melody it's playing at the time. The chords, which section of the orchestra is providing the harmonic support for the melody, and the bass grounds the harmony of the other two elements. And extras is anything that's like percussion swells or string and wind runs, brass stabs, that sort of thing. Okay, so once the composing and orchestrating are done, it's time to move on to making a mock-up. Important thing to note here is that I'm not aiming for true realism. I'm trying to see what all the parts sound like together. I've created a template and I've been using the sign player from Orchestral Tools. And the library I've been using is the Berlin Orchestra, the version that was created for Berklee Music School. It's brilliant because it's a comprehensive orchestra to write with and you get solo instruments as well as full and full sections. For example, you get four horns and an ensemble patch instead of just one horn that you would duplicate four times, which is great for writing individual parts. I think this library makes it much easier to think like an orchestrator. All of the instruments were carefully recorded at their natural gain levels with musicians sat in traditional orchestra seating in the room, which results in a natural balance across the orchestra straight out of the box. And the other thing I really like about this library is its relatively small footprint in terms of memory and in terms of storage. I'm able to have it installed on my laptop for composing on the go, and it ships with the most useful articulations for writing with. So with that in mind, I only have on my template one instance of sign player per instrument, and I like to use articulation maps inside of Logic Pro to trigger key switches to change the articulation in sign player. So I'll play through the first couple of bars where you will notice the articulation switching in all of the parts from short staccato notes to trills and sustains. So we've come out of Logic, and we've mocked up our piece of music, we've got lots of MIDI data. So we export all of that out and bring it into Sibelius or a notation software of your choice. And then using a template, you can lay it out neatly for your players to read. Something I like to include in my scores is the chord symbols, somewhere on an unnamed percussion staff at the top or at the bottom. I also like to make a piano reduction of my entire piece and that helps me keep on top of what interesting things are taking place. There's a couple of things to consider when writing for orchestra. Firstly, the ensemble that I used only had single winds, which means that I had one of each player for flute, oboe, clarinet and bassoon. Um, the way I worked around this was by mainly having them play solo lines and by making sure that any chords that they do form as a section were well balanced and within the best ranges for each of those individual instruments so that they blend nicely together. But harps are not pianos. They don't have 10 fingers available at all times. They have eight. Um, you can't always just copy and paste a piano part onto a harp part and it will work. Another thing to do before the session is to prepare your clicks and prelays, if there are any prelays. Um, for my session, I was relying on the conductor to set the tempo and to feel the piece more organically and more naturally, but for a lot of film and TV work, you will need to generate clicks and have them sent to the Pro Tools operator beforehand. Once that's all ready, you print all your parts and get ready to go to recording day. 
which is next. Hello. Oh, things you can do on this day just to kind of help things go smoothly bring your mates if you've got space if you're in a concert hall bring some friends it was amazing everything was beautiful so they can see why you've been neglecting them for the last like six months if you have the time and resources available to do it then make sure you conduct your piece It's literally the best feeling in the world and you will be thinking about it for months afterwards. Thanks again to Orchestral Tools for partnering with me on this project. See you on the next one. Cool, well that was fun.